Well, I've reached the age where it's harder to think of my body as a temple. It's more like a building project that got out of control. But right on time for a fresh start, it is the return today of uh, exercise physiology and nutrition expert, the most decorated natural bodybuilder in the world. And on top of this, a pastor, Ron Williams, is here, is back from Utah. Yes, ma'am. And Ron, I want to just remind folks of a good time we had with the Full Circle Girls. Shall we just do a little flashback? I'd love to see it myself. Here's what it looked like. <laughs> good job. We stay within that three to five seconds. <sighs> oh, okay. Woo. Feeling it I in the arms. <laughs> <laughs> she's feeling in her yeah, arms. She's, I can feel That's that. That's anticipating this next yeah. exercise. <laughs> The next exercise we're gonna do is a chest press. Again, the muscle is made in an arc, so we're gonna concentrate on an arc movement. Got that? Yeah. Okay, five seconds. Five, <laughs> four, three. Should be in position, oh, two, oh, oh. one. Here we go, push nice. out and around. There you go. Nice and smooth. Now remember, these exercises are not necessarily for fitness. Here. They're for fat loss. Fat loss is different than fitness with exercising as well as the nutritional portion of it. I think it really sparked something in Canada, Ron, <laughs> uh, because of that first visit. Faith and Fat Loss is the book. It's the name of your ministry. And really, you're training trainers across yes, North America. Uh, and it's not, we look at you and we think, oh boy, it's about the body beautiful. Uh, that is really not the case at all, is it? No, it's not. It really isn't. It has a lot to do with what's inside, you know, a huge portion of it. And across America, as well as Canada, we're finding that uh, obesity is growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. And we've even got a new breed of people. It's called super morbid obesity. Super morbid? Yes, ma'am. What does that mean? It means your body fat is above 50%. Oh. These are the truly truly massive people that we see the documentaries about. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, seven to twelve hundred pounds, you know, mm. a piece. I, I want to find out why you turned your life experience in this direction. It's very timely. But I wonder how many people know the story. I mean, I, he, just a couple of facts. Uh, over 250 awards for bodybuilding. You literally sculpted your body into a human masterpiece uh, out of a uh, love of sports as a, as a kid. Winning became everything. But you looked in the mirror and the idea of not living was more appealing than yes, any of these victories. Mm -hmm. Tell well, us what was going on. You know, um, when you come from where I came from, your cup is always half empty rather than half full. And so every competition I won, it wasn't that I won the victory, I'm the best in the world now. Uh, the thought process is, I didn't lose. The guy who could have beat me didn't show up today, so I've gotta work harder and harder and harder. And I was really out to try to prove to myself and to the world that, um, that I could be somebody, that I could do something that was worthwhile. And my life stayed that way until I finally met God and I turned the sport and my life over to God. And I actually retired for seven years, which was the hardest thing for me to do. The Lord you stopped bodybuilding altogether? For seven years, went on a 40-day water fast, lost 52 pounds. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it was the hardest thing for me to do because when God spoke to me and said, I want you to retire, I looked around and said, I rebuke you, devil. <laughs> and the Lord said, I'm not the devil. But I held bodybuilding so tight. Yeah. It that, was your um, life. It was my God, mm. you know, and so God is a jealous God. And when I let it go, uh, seven years later, the number of completion, he gave it back. One of the wonderful things, God doesn't waste anything. Amen. We come to Amen. believe that. We see it. Yes. You were a perfectionist. And in your pursuit of everything good for your body, mm -hmm. uh, you equipped for what you're doing now. Yes, I mean, the, the, the knowledge in here is, is biblical, it is, is uh, uh, nutritional, it's, it's physical. It, it, because you excelled, you pushed to get it all. 
God is now using it uh, to, to make you a person who, on top of all this, brings a pastoral approach to helping people become whole. Yes, That's ma'am. the issue, isn't it? That's, that's the whole issue. And um, the Bible tells us that all things work together for the good to those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. And so everything that I ever went through, all of the pain, all the good, all the bad, God has fused it together uh, for this ministry so that all of those experiences and knowledge can actually help other people accomplish what they want to accomplish. Can you say that about being abandoned by your mother at the age of four? Three, yes ma'am, I can. Three? Yes ma'am. I can say that um, it helps me to understand people in a way that a lot of people couldn't understand people and it, and it brings about a depth and a realness um, and even with the child molestation, that brings about uh, a realness. One out of every three females are molested or raped at some time in their life. One out of every five males are molested and raped. And that's a subject that's not uh, talked about a whole lot, but we talk about that in the book and also how that can affect you in um, making you overweight and obese. Now, you were shuffled from home to home and I know a huge issue was not feeling wanted anywhere, but was it over nine years that you were sexually molested? Yes, ma'am. Nine years? Yeah. Now, what did that do to a, a young boy growing up? Well, it, it, it developed um, an, um, um, a dim picture of the world, of people, and it made me feel like um, if my mother didn't love me, if my father didn't love me, if Santa Claus didn't come around, that um, how could there be a God that really loves me? I believe there was a God, but I thought that he was against me and that people were uh, created for one reason, and that was to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to build this big body, this strong body to, as a protection from other people. And I wanted to be intimidating so, um, so they wouldn't would even think about it. That's right. Right? That's right. Now, now you mentioned of something of a God concept, but when you did encounter Christians, that was just exasperating. Yeah, well, you didn't want to talk to them. Well, when they came around, they would tell me about God, and I would think, you know what? You say God loves me. God loves everybody but me, because if He loved me, He would have stopped all of these things that I went through. But at my conversion, um, I remember um, the Lord. Uh, I, I prayed for the first time and I asked God to come into my life. I said, if you really love me like these people say, if you're really on my side, then, then God, then save me. If my life, if you can take nothing and make something, then here's nothing. And the Lord spoke to me and I thought God spoke to every Christian. I went around telling people, God spoke to me. And they would say, well, how did he speak? What did he say, you know? And um, he told me from that point that I had an enemy that uh, knew all of my weakness, all of my strengths, and he would use my weaknesses against me to destroy me. And mm -hmm. so God began to equip me and teach me the Word of God as studying and praying, and, and, and here I am. You know, I want to understand this moment, and maybe it's not a moment, but a process. I mean, you hadn't wept in 10 years. In, tears had not come from your eyes through all this pain in over a decade, and you have this moment of finally yielding to God and asking His forgiveness. Yeah. How long did it take for you to really experience how loved you were by Him? You know, that was- that was, fixed in a moment? No, ma'am, no, ma'am, it was a long process. I was probably, I've never heard this before, I was one of the Christians that believed in God, but didn't believe in the Bible. I started believing in the Bible by trying to prove the Bible wrong. After you gave your life to After Christ? After I gave my life to Christ, I would read scripture and I said, that couldn't be true. That couldn't be true. And then God would prove it to me how true it was. And you know, I'd been lied to my whole life. And mm, um, what made me fall so deeply in love with God was that he never lied to me. You know, I, I, I really, you know, when people say they love you, you know, uh, I always thought, how could you love me? What do you want from me? 